in Belfast going to work. He was bothered. He took philosophy and he, he read different things like that and he was looking for something. And he did say and to me that day when I was speaking, he said, Albert Hull's got something. That time he got saved, it changed his life. And I know I need what he has, but how did he get it and what is it? And he searched and he tried this and that. And then he read his Bible. I'm going to work one morning behind the bus. They had a big text in the back of the bus. He said, I come to six red lights. Every time I, the bus stopped, I was behind it, and I saw the text. What is it? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, not of works, lest any man should boast. Thank God for those that paid a thousand pounds to put it there for a year. And he said the last, I had to take the turn off either to the right or left, and the bus went on. And he says, I pulled into the place to park my vehicle to go to work. And I slumped over the wheel. And I said to myself, oh, I long to be saved. I want to have this settled. And he said, just over that wheel. Just, well, what do you want more? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's not a works, Bobby. Right there, he says, I got saved at the steering wheel. You could get saved in this meeting tonight, lost in your sins, without Christ, without hope, without God. Not of works. All the best deeds we can do according to the Word of God, the Bible, our best deeds, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And that's why the work of Christ will stand in all its absolute solitary dignity. Number one, thank God for its value. The value of that work, my friend, extends into the eons of the eons of eternity. Thousands and millions of souls will gather at the feet, the pierced feet of the wounded Christ because of that work that he wrought at Calvary, that infinite work. What was that work? To put away our sins. To die as a substitute for the sinner. To pay the price that we couldn't pay. To offer to God an acceptable sacrifice to meet the need of a guilty world. Listen to the Bible. God desires all men to be saved. Come to the knowledge of the truth. One God, one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a substitutionary ransom on the behalf. I think if I wasn't saved, I might just latch on there. On behalf of all men, for I'm one of those sinners. Oh, my friend, tonight in the meeting, thank God for the infinite value of the work. Not only its value, but thank God for its virtue. Hymn writer, I like the old hymns. I like that hymn, Nothing in My Hand I Bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for rest. Vile I to the fountain fly. Cleanse me, Savior, or I die. See, friend, there's virtue in the work of Christ. You know why there's virtue in it? Because of the one who offered himself to God. He was God's eternal son. He had all the competence to deal with humankind sin. He was God. He was man. And a Calvary friend, we sang it this morning, bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood. Seal my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Not only its value. Godward, God's infinitely satisfied with the work of his son. Yonder for six hours upon the cross, outside the city walls of Jerusalem, upon Golgotha's tree. Thank God for its value, its virtue. People who have trusted in Christ and appreciated the work that he accomplished for them. Thank God they're destined for glory. I'm glad there's a victory in that work. You know what he said? It is finished. Those are the words of a conqueror. That's not the words of a weak, dying man. Never think of Christ on a cross, weak and dying. He was there as one that had all competence because he was God's son to deal with man's sin and to bear the wrath that sin deserved. 
Thank God on the cross, he made a full atonement. Now his saving work is done. He has satisfied the Father who accepts us in his Son. If I asked everyone tonight, write down what you're depending on for heaven. What would you write down? What would you write down beside? What would you write down on a piece of paper? If we kindly and compassionately, not to put you in, but just to ask you simply, kindly, compassionately, put down what you're depending on to take you to heaven. What would you write down? I seek no other argument. I want no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Friend, my only passport to heaven is the infinite work of Christ. Thank God for that work. Victorious. He cried as a mighty conqueror. Isn't it lovely the language of John when he's writing about the crucifixion? He cried with a loud voice, It is finished. It is finished. Could I suggest that that word finished, it must have, it must have caused angels to stand back and did you hear that? Did you, did you hear what took place outside the walls of Jerusalem? Did you hear that cry? Did you? It seems like they, they I'm using sanctified imagination, it seems they must have like a course gone through the regions of heaven. Finished, 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 finished. But I'll tell you something, forget about the angels. I think when he said it is finished, God's heart was, I'm going to use the word thrilled. Absolutely. My son has finished the greatest work in the universe. He has made a meeting place for the sinner. He has made a provision for all men and all who come, black, white, yellow, matter, race, class, color, creed, age, doesn't matter, that come and trust only in him will be in heaven. Let me close. Did you get that infinite love? Did you get that infinite work means that you can't fully comprehend it? But it's there. By faith they accept it. Do you know the infinite loss? It's Christ that's speaking, and I haven't got the ability tonight, neither have I got the touch that I would like to have just to, you know, if you drew the curtains back just for a moment and think of the thousands that pass into eternity every day. And they're either going to heaven based on the work of Christ, faith in Him, or they're going to a lost eternity. Jesus himself understood it in all its infinite reality when he said, what shall it profit anyone? If they gain the whole world, their world of sports, their world of pleasure, their world of finance, their world of whatever, if they gain their whole world and they end to lose their soul, what shall anyone give in exchange for his soul? I trust God will touch your heart as the meeting goes on, that you'll stop a moment. Yes, God did love. Yes, Christ did finish the work. Yes, the solemn possibility is that you could be lost forever. Your choice. I'm going to say something before I sit down. Any soul that lands in the regions of the darkness of despair the night of misery, eternally, and in hell, listen, they're there by their own choice. You have a great opportunity tonight. Turn to Christ. God loves you. God gave us something. Christ died. Salvation's free, not of works. Trust him, and you'll be saved.